Hey, I beg your pardon. I thought it would have been a good idea to drink a bottle of cheap champagne while I was filming the first section. But it wasn't because I started slurring. Then I was struggling to stay awake. Then I flooded the bathroom and the lounge room and it gave me a splitting headache. But anyway, the show must go on. Okay, so as I was saying, this guy that I was... We weren't boyfriend and girlfriend officially, but we were talking to each other and seeing each other. We got pretty close. So I was still confused and he gave me a massive list of toxic family secrets that is taller than I am which isn't hard anyway because I'm only five foot one. Then he told me about my f friend, we're not friends anymore, about why she was telling me about these YouTube channels of people reading tarot cards that was somehow supposed to be relevant to me and my life. And he said that I was dumb for not figuring out for myself and he didn't want me to miss out on my life. And he told me that some other people were bribing my family to keep this a secret from me so they could take my place. Then I thought to myself, like, screw you. This is my life. Like, this is my life purpose, my path. Nobody has the right to keep it a secret from me or to take it away from me or to interfere with it. And he even showed me the proof that he was being bribed to walk away from me so I would have absolutely no emotional support from anyone. Then he said that I've been left with an inheritance which is money and a new home. So I asked like where is it? And he said it's with Luke. And I asked who is Luke? Who goes by the name of Anthony and has this channel where he reads horoscopes and I got a pretty big earful about him which I'm not happy or impressed with and I'm not exactly comfortable with all these different social media platforms where everyone is following me but still trying to keep this a secret from me and keep this away from me it's just not right so with that massive download that I had gotten that night I didn't want this because I was so hurt and I was really really upset seeing the true colors of the people that are around me by that point though I was doing really well with my degree I was getting distinctions and high and high distinctions and my attendance was near perfect I was going to the gym pretty much every day so I figured if I just focus on my degree and move away quietly then everyone will forget about me but I ended up failing that semester because after all of this I was so hurt I was missing classes I was failing exams because I wasn't going to classes and getting the information that I needed to pass the exams I ended up getting put onto ac academic probation so I was starting to wonder if this is happening for a reason because I'm really not supposed to be going down this path then I ended up leaving that college and I enrolled into another one and did the same Bachelor of Music Business. I wasn't doing really well there either because I was still really hurt about everything but I remember that September Placebo came to Sydney and I went to go see them which was awesome because City Calm Down which is my third favorite band, third favorite band, they 
they came to Sydney the night before and they played here. So I saw a city come down and then the following night I went and saw Placebo. That was an awesome weekend. And Placebo opened with Every You, Every Me, which is such an awesome song. But instead of playing it live, they opened a video. They redid the music video for Every You, Every Me. And in the opening scene for that video, it says the Gemini Club. And I took the name without permission, and that's what I'm calling my YouTube channel. So please don't sue me. I'm more than happy to change it, but please don't sue me. Then I started to feel a lot happier. Because despite the family deceit and lies, I was still looking for the littlest things to make me happy, and that was one of them. So then when I enrolled into this other college, I wasn't showing up to classes there either. I had so much time to sit and think, and all these suppressed emotions and memories came back about my childhood and my upbringing. And now I f was starting to understand why. I didn't feel loved or appreciated as much as my brother and sister and why i feel like my family was always trying to like shove me down it was a very very difficult and painful time for me but i got through it eventually i still knew that i wasn't ready for for any of this because i knew i had a lot of healing to go through on my own so I decided that I might just take some time for myself to work and save, like to leave college, to work and save and go on a pilgrimage. And a pilgrimage, for those who don't know what it is, it's a, it's a trip to a sacred place like Egypt or Jerusalem. I could meditate and bathe in the sea or the river whatever they have over there completely naked and brush up all the dirt and to come back refreshed so I could start this beautiful new chapter in my life so I ended up getting a job everyone knows where I don't want to say it oh, and I have to talk about a lot of filth that I don't want to so I'm going to take as many breaks as I have to uh, because it's relevant to my journey and my spiritual growth, etc, etc. Yeah, so this was September 2017. So I started working because I wanted to save my trip. And I also decided that I wanted to have a baby as well. And I've got this condition, polycystic ovary syndrome, which is a nightmare to deal with. It's not uncommon though, like millions of women have it. I think one in ten, one in ten women have it. And I went and saw a doctor about it and all she said was just lose weight and have a proper, like have a balanced diet. So I was working, saving, going to the gym every day. It was a really, really beautiful time. Then one day, when I was at work, I started paying attention to what people were doing. And just out of nowhere, these people were talking about getting someone to finger me down there. Well, where else? My nose? My armpit? So I walked out of there and I figured maybe I shouldn't be here doing this. So I didn't go back for a while. I ended up going to see a counsellor about it though. And he said that these people are just scumbags. He said, like we weighed out the pros and cons together. He said that I probably shouldn't go back for my own well-being and mental health. And at the same time, I should just focus on my savings and once I've saved up everything that I needed to just get out of there completely and don't go back. While I was in that counseling session with him I was reading through like all this garbage that these people were saying and doing 
And something came up that this group of people were contacting people that I was seeing and even people that I've never met before to try hook up with me and to be sneaky and take the condom off to try and make me pregnant or to put me at risk of contracting a disease. This goes to every single person in the world. You have the absolute right to say no. Don't ever let anyone try to force themselves onto you or to do things that you don't want to do. If people can't respect your emotions and your feelings, then they're not going to respect your body. So anyway, that counselor was a man and he just recommended to get a diaphragm fitted because condoms, yeah, condoms can break, which puts you at risk of pregnancy and diseases. Anyway, diaphragms are just better. I personally recommend them to every single female. Yeah, I was pretty disgusted by that actually. And he also said to keep the records, which I have been, because I need to protect myself and my health and my body. So even the people that ran that place involved themselves into this. No one was forced into that drama, FYI. No one held a gun against their heads. They joined in on their own free will. But I knew that there wasn't anything wrong with me because I wasn't doing anything wrong to anyone. I was just living my life. Then I went out with this guy that I really, really liked, James. And I saw that these people were trying to get him to have sex with me to try and make me pregnant, which was disgusting and disturbing and a total disrespect to my boundaries. I really liked him and yes, we did do it because I'm an adult and he's an adult and it's nobody's business either. And it was really, really hard to get into the mood because just imagine knowing these people are like, <sighs> like that creep from Hey Arnold. So I just blocked it out and I just enjoyed my time with him. I still hadn't gone back to that job in this time. I was looking for jobs like in supermarkets, cafes, but unfortunately they only they only seem to give part-time jobs to people that are here on visas because they pay them less and they do want to work as well because they're here on visas and need to support themselves. So I ended up going back I didn't want to, but I was just so focused on traveling first. Then, yeah, I think I went to, hmm, I'm trying to remember that far back. I'll have to go back through my records. Yeah, so I was going to class and then Randomly, I got a message from one of the women that were managing that place asking me if I want to work that weekend. So I said, okay, I will. I'll come in Friday, but not the Saturday. Then when I was getting ready to go to work, I was just reading all the garbage just to see what people were doing and they were trying to get the girls that work there and some random guy to come in to try and get me onto meth, the drug, methamphetamine. I do not know why. I don't know the reason behind it, but 
someone will tell me eventually. I think it was to get me high enough so that this person would be able to have sex with me without a condom. I don't know, it is still absolutely beyond me. Then, when I was getting ready to go to work, I found this camera that my sister had given me in one of my drawers. So if anything like that happened, I would be able to have it on camera and call the police because the, ca the counsel that I was talking to, he told me if you are having intercourse with someone, and this does happen, it doesn't happen only to people that work in the adult industry, it happens in real life. And he said that's called stealthing, which is very, very sneaky. That's why it's called stealthing. So I'm glad that I spoke to a counsellor first and he gave me the gave me the advice that he did so I could protect myself. At that point though, with everything, all the downloads that I've that I'd received from this guy that I was dating, about family secrets, etc. etc. I was starting to fall apart. I was breaking down crying every five minutes and because there were bribes being thrown around for people to walk away from me to offer me no emotional support, I didn't know what to do. So I went to work and the girls there, there were some girls there, there are a lot of people that work there that are on that stuff and I smoke uh, I used to smoke cigarettes I'm on the vape now because I want to give up completely pulled out a meth pipe with meth in it and was smoking in front of me and I asked her if I can try some and she said no she said you are such a sweet girl in the short time that I've known you you seem really sweet and you have your life together I don't want to see you go down this path but I kept asking like give me some give me some I want to try some so she did and then someone came in that wanted to see me for a while and there is a lot of BS and chaos going on outside right now so just bear with me. I don't know, this computer actually has really, really bad quality sound. And the only microphone that I have is on my earphones, which is going, which really, really annoys me. I don't know if the computer can pick up the sirens outside. Yeah, so anyway, I saw that um, these people, losers, had arranged for this guy to come in and see me and he did for like six hours and he does that stuff regularly and trying to get him to push me onto it that was my first night trying it though i already had tried it a few hours before he came in and i saw him i have to admit that when I did try it for the first time that night, I was in so much pain. So when I tried it, it was just this euphoric feeling. I was just happy because it did something to my brain where I can't feel sadness. I didn't have any anxiety or anything. I was just happy. And yeah, so when I saw that these people were trying to get this guy to come in to see me to try and push stuff onto me, I was just thinking about the money that I'm saving for my trip. So I was like, I'm not going to, I'm not going to do it with, with him. I'm just going to get my money, finish my shift, and go home. 
Also, I wasn't doing anything wrong anyway because I had already applied for an Australian bu Australian business number. So after I had all the money that I needed for my trip, I could declare it, put it in the bank, and then organize my trip. So I don't understand where all this drama was coming from. It was stupid. So when I was with this person, I was starting to come down from the effects. And because he had so much of it, I took more so I could get high again. And I developed a habit from then, like from then, from that night. Now I totally understand why people take drugs and develop addictions and even become alcoholics. Because I went through it, I turned to substances when I was finding it extremely hard to cope with reality. Even when my ex-boyfriend... I don't even know if that's like the appropriate term to use, we were just... Whatever we were. He said that I shouldn't be sad because I am loved and appreciated and eventually I am going to get the assistance that I need. But I felt like I needed to go through my healing process alone and I had already decided for myself that I wanted to go into this trip to refresh before I connect with everyone else and follow my destiny. So anyway, the time went on. I was saving, looking forward to my trip, working towards it. And then, yeah, I started seeing this other guy who was the best friend of one of my ex-boyfriends that I dumped because I found out he cheated on me. Then a few, like, it took me a few days to decide if I was going to dump him or if I was just going to ignore it, but I knew that I didn't deserve to be cheated on, which was really bitchy for me to do. Yeah, so we started hanging out, and then the first day we hung out, we were in the city. The second time we met up in Newtown. Yeah, so the third time that we hung out together, I went to his place. And by that time, I was taking drugs pretty regularly. And he has a history of taking that stuff as well. And when we were hanging out, I saw that these people that were making my private life their business, let's just call them sheep, that were following these two people that bribed pretty much everyone in my life to walk away from me without any emotional support whatsoever to try and have sex with me without protection to make me pregnant or something. But I didn't want to, so I said no, because I have every single right to say no if I don't want to do that with someone. And he got really, really abusive. And I just figured it was just from the drugs that we were on, because he was a delight to be around when we weren't high. Besides, I already have the contraception that I chose to use. So I was just thinking to myself, like, how can you bribe someone to try and make me pregnant when I'm already protecting myself? And it's also up to me if I want to be pregnant or not. So that's really stupid. How disgusting is your mind to even think up something like that? And these other sheep have no business in my...
private life either. So I just ignored it. Then time went on and then time went on and it was Christmas time and my family have a holiday house in Queensland. So they went there for a few weeks and I didn't want to go because I just wanted to work towards my trip. Whoops. But I wanted to be there for Christmas. So I booked a plane to go to Queensland on Christmas Eve. And I had to go and check in at the desk because I was only bringing carry-on luggage. And the girl at the check-in desk said that my plane has been delayed. I can't remember what time it was supposed to be. Let's just say it was supposed to be at 3.25, okay? So then she wrote down on a bit of paper that the new time was supposed... Boarding time starts at 3.25. And she said... Oh, that's when the lounge opens at 3.25. And then she was like, you can go to the food court and hang around in there until boarding time. So I was like, okay, because the food court there has Krispy Kremes. So I went to the food court, got some donuts, got other snacks. And then I sat down and I was just like reading through all the BS just to see what everyone was up to and I found that the girl at the desk lied to me about the plane being delayed and giving me a new time for boarding so I could miss my plane so I wouldn't be there with my family for Christmas so I got up and I ran to the terminal and by the time I got there I saw that the plane was just leaving. Why? I don't know why. So I ended up missing that plane and I was so angry, I was so upset that I went back to that girl and I started yelling at her and then she went and got her supervisor and he told me to go to the help desk and they'll fix up a flight for me. So they ended up getting me a plane on Christmas Day, very early in the morning, when I wanted to be at home with my family. It's disgusting. My voice is starting to crank out because it's really late at night and I'm tired. Because I got woken up from my nap with sirens. I think it was police sirens, like, screaming down the street. So anyway, yeah, it was Christmas and yeah, I arrived in Queensland early on Christmas Day, which I should have been there the night before. And I slept the whole day anyway because I took sleeping, I took a sleeping tablet before I left for the airport the previous day so I could sleep on the plane because flying really freaks me out and then I was struggling to stay awake all night so I could make my plane really early in the morning to be with my family for Christmas so Christmas was pretty crap that year because I was so tired so so tired and because I was really angry and upset with my family like I was sitting at Christmas dinner with my family with all these secrets I just felt sick so I left it as soon as I could the next day on Boxing Day and then just carried on living my life saving for my trip in a really crappy job that I hated there are sirens going off outside I don't know if the computer will be able to pick it up. I'm sorry for this. Uh, 
I'm really restless. Like, I can't sit still. But then, if I don't finish doing this, then... I'm gonna waste so much time probably watching Netflix or something. Yeah, so then I just carried on living my life, saving for my trip, focusing on my goals, and the chaos that these people started, it just kept on going and going and going, and I was sick of it. I wasn't coping. My addiction was getting out of control. It was starting to run my life, and I had to live at home with my family because I was saving for my trip. <sighs> then, eventually, these damn sirens. Yeah, then eventually, I just thought to myself, like, this is so effed up. This is so effed up that all this is going on with these people. My family knows about it. They're not standing up for me. They're just letting it happen. So I was like, screw it. And I just left. That was April 18th. And I'm never going to forget that because City Calm Down have a track called April 18th. Let's look it up. I'm pretty sure it's called April 18th. April 18, just April 1-8. I missed something out. So... Between Christmas and April 18, because these people knew that I had a substance problem, as did most of everyone else that I worked with, that involved themselves in all the madness, I was on my way to work and I was on the bus and I saw that they were trying to get me to get stuff for them to get me in trouble so i didn't actually speak to any of the people that i worked with because i knew that they were rubbish and i said that i needed to go and make a phone call and one of them busted in without knocking and saw that I was getting high and she asked me if um, I can get her some stuff but because I already knew that they were trying to get me stuff for them to get me in trouble I'm not gonna say what I said but basically I said no but not as nicely as that oh and her name was Louise, but on Messenger, her name is Lou. That's how I found out what her real name is. God, she spread so many lies about me. So a few weeks after that, um, she asked if I can get her some stuff. And I said, I didn't say no like that. I use a lot of profanities then she started screaming and I knew that was just typical drug seeking behavior because I've heard on the news that junkies like even kill their own families to get drugs or to get money for drugs like they go to, like they go to all kinds of crazy extremes just to get a fix of whatever and she said that she knows my two dogs names and she said what they were and i was really really freaked out because i knew that she was crazy but i didn't want her to bring my beautiful dogs into it so i was like okay then sure why not so then she gave me money 
to get her stuff and I went to there was a convenience store next door IGA and I got some rock salt <laughs> and I gave that to her instead and I kept her money for myself I can't remember this far back but I think she was being bribed to ask me for stuff and then to say that I was giving her crap and drugging her and then when I thought about it really hard it's like she was pushing 50 so she was quite old anyway like older than me like 50 isn't that old but you know what I mean and she was homeless she was living and sleeping at work because all of her money was going on drugs so I just figured she was probably just desperate for money for drugs to do that to me and could have been envious as well because why else would you do that to someone that you barely know plus I had a lot of annoying clients that I had to deal with on top of all this chaos and drama that was going on around me so yes I decided to leave my family because I, I was just sick this is just like disgusting I hadn't arranged for a place to move into so I was just working like back-to-back -back shifts like from open to close and the owner said that I can um, yeah just sleep there because I'm working so much so it's kind of cool so I ended up finding a place to move into it was just a cheap room in North Sydney which I really didn't want to move into because I was saving for this trip that I was so I had my heart set on so it was just putting a delay in my plans and putting a delay in my journey the people that I live with as well were jerks I remember this other time at work with that other crazy lady that I was working with the receptionist um, got me an out call job and it was with a with I think I, I think he was a drug dealer because when I got there he had a lot of stuff he had cocaine he had meth he had this other stuff called G which apparently you like really rust your, <laughs> rust your brain I didn't have any of that though and when she was putting me in a taxi to go to this out call she asked me if I can get her some stuff because they've known each other for a while and they had already pre-arranged for me to give some stuff to her and I was thinking to myself um no because you're probably going to try and sabotage me and probably trying to set me up for something because a few hours before that crazy lady that I gave rock salt to she came into my room without knocking again and she asked if she can have three cigarettes for ten bucks and I felt like greedy but I was like no I said no but she insisted so when I was going through my stuff going through my bag to find cigarettes to give her she stole my phone but I hadn't had a whole lot of sleep from drugs anyway so I was a bit scattered and I didn't realize that she took my phone until I was almost um, in the taxi so I was getting the receptionist to call and call and call and call and call my phone because I wasn't going anywhere without my mobile phone for safety and then she came out and she was like is this your phone yes it is my phone so I knew something was up so after I had finished with that client I think um, 
I came back with like 1500 bucks just from that one job and that was like my cut and that client had given me some stuff to give to the receptionist but I gave her this powder that I put in my shoes so my shoes don't smell from getting sweaty <laughs> And then the next time I worked with her, I was like, oh, how was that stuff that I gave you? And she was like, oh, yeah, it was so good. I really enjoyed it. <laughs> I'm not going to let anyone sabotage me. And besides, I already kept the records of what everyone was doing, so I knew how to protect myself. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so then um, a month later... This was April 18 when I moved from my family. So then a month later was May and I'd settled into my new place with those jerks I was living with. They were all on visas. One was from Scotland, one was, was from some place I can't even pronounce. And the other two were from the Philippines. And they're always spying and bitching about me. Being in my damn business all the time. It was really annoying. Then I went, yeah, then, yes, yeah, so this was like the following month in May, and there was a girl that I was working with, she was actually kind of nice to me. We were just chatting away in the girl's room when it was really quiet, and I can't remember what her name was, I think it was Taylor. I remember anyway she said that she recently had a miscarriage and that she had a miscarriage because her partner beat her up so bad that she miscarried and she said that she didn't know that she was pregnant because when she went for an ultrasound it was behind her uterus and I felt sad and she also told me some other rubbish that there's like a warrant out for her arrest or something and the girls there were really nice to me so nice but they were talking trash about me to everyone else who would listen to them and then a few days after that, I think it was on the Friday, I was watching Con Air and I was crying because the end scene when Nicolas Cage reunites with his wife and his child, oh yeah, I was crying. It was such a... I'm trying to think about it now because I will cry. And yeah, we're just like chilling out and she asked me if I was okay. And I was like, yeah, it's just the movie. So then afterwards, she um, asked me if I wanted a coffee and a cigarette <laughs> to calm me down because we're at work. I didn't want to be crying at work. So it was just her and I, and we were sitting in the smoking area so we could have like a coffee and a cigarette. And she told me and she told me that what she had told me about the, um, her miscarriage and her partner abusing her was all BS and said that she said that to me because she wanted to find out if I knew what was going on behind my back and I said what do you mean and she said well do you know that people are plotting on you to get you pregnant Yes, I've known that for a long time, but it had gotten to the point where these people were trying to make me pregnant. So if I went to a doctor, a doctor wouldn't tell me about it, but would tell everyone else. And then these people would get someone to punch me to have a miscarriage. I didn't know that it got to that stage, to that point, 
but it made me very sick and very sad because when I was 15 I had a friend she had an older sister that was a lot older than us I think she was 21 and we were 15 16 and she had moved back home and I went to go and visit my friend and I could hear her sister crying and grizzling and she said that she was six months pregnant and she was covered in bruises the first time I met her she was just covered in bruises like on her neck on her face everywhere on her arms because she was six months pregnant and her partner beat her up and she ended up having a miscarriage and she was six months pregnant and that made me really, really sick and disgusted. And then a few years later, that woman that was my friend's sister, um, we found out that she had broken, or her partner had broken into another friend that I'm no longer friends with. Like, they, she broke into her house and stole some of her stuff. So it just looks like she was just around bad people, like... Chose the wrong people to be in relationships with. And I can remember thinking to myself when I was 15, like, I'm never ever going to be with someone that's going to treat me like that. So I asked this lady that I was working with, and I said, why did you tell me that then? And... Oh yeah, she also said that the thing about her, the warrant out for her, her arrest was garbage as well. And when I asked her why she's telling me this, she said because I told you that to find what kind of a person you were. And you didn't go around and, t and say that to anyone. And she said that she thought I was a really sweet and nice person. And that I should know. By that point, I was still struggling already enough as it was that I didn't need this in my life and I sure as hell did not deserve it either. So I just ignored it. And I was well aware of it enough to protect myself from it. I can't remember what happened after then, so I just have to go back and have a look. This was just after the royal wedding. Meghan Markle and um, Prince Harry. Yes, yeah, so that was sometime in May. Okay. Yes. Then I went back home and I got in contact with um, someone that I met when I first moved to Sydney. That was the end of May though. It was like the 21st or something. I'll have to go back through my messages to, um, <laughs> I'll have to go back through my message history to find out when I contacted him to hang out. We've established that it was the end of May sometime and I was just telling him about everything and venting and crying. We had a few drinks and we sat at on the balcony of the place that I was living with those other jerks. Prior to this, okay, so this was in March. A friend of mine, no, she wasn't a friend of mine. She was a girl that I, oh, she was actually, mm, 
she wasn't a friend, but she wasn't an enemy. She was just annoying. But she pulled me aside into one of the rooms. And she told me that it was Luke's birthday. Luke, Anthony, whatever name he goes by. I was like, so? And she said that he had gotten her to tell me that it was her birthday to see if I could figure, to see if I knew about it. I don't care when your birthday is. You're nothing to me. So, yeah, she just told me because my phone is tapped and he can read my messages. Um, just, like, keep message messaging her, like, happy birthday and talk to her about her birthday throughout the day just to see what he would do. And then he started his Kent Moon's Tarot channel on the 21st of March that year. Yeah. So, um... Going back to May, yeah, I was watching his channel as well, and I think he's really, really unattractive and annoying to look at. I've saved a lot of his videos, and he's saying that he is predicting or seeing a miscarriage and an abortion, and he's like, my condolences. You are sick if you're involved in this disgusting drama. What the hell is wrong with you? And he even had a tattoo on his wrist by that point. So he was already like premeditating an abortion or miscarriage. That was that was sick. So when I asked my friend to come over. No, he, like, he's not a friend. He was actually two-faced, just like everyone else that I've had in my life. <laughs> and I was just talking to him about a lot of childhood trauma. Things that I had never spoken about with anyone. I know that I've spoken about bits and pieces of it, but the real thing that I was going through is too, it's too messed up, even for therapy. And I was dealing with that on my own throughout this rubbish. And I was just talking to him and crying about all the family stuff, about the trauma that I was coping with and working through. And he showed me that this cretin and his sheep were trying to get him to sleep with me, to try and knock me up. But people that are that psychotic, they don't understand when enough is enough. And I was already struggling with drugs as well. Let me be very clear with that though. Okay, so when I wasn't on something, I was having anxiety. I couldn't function normally. I couldn't get out of bed. I couldn't look after myself properly. But when I was high, as I said before, it did something to my brain where I couldn't feel sadness or anything. I could actually function normally. That's the struggle that I had with drugs and so I figured that once I get to either Egypt or Jerusalem whichever place I chose to go that I'll just have a full purge of everything so I can come back refreshed but we didn't sleep with each other anyway he was actually a gentleman he was nurturing me and he was a shoulder for me to cry on. He he bought me pizza, which he didn't ask me to pay him back for either. Um, he helped me organize my whole room. 
He put all my clothes up on coat hangers. He cleaned it for me. He was just being there for me. Then, a few days later, he messaged me saying that, um, I don't know, I'll go back through my messages. It was so long ago. He just said that he needed to see me. So he ended up coming over again. <clears throat> and the first time that I saw him was on the, on the Monday. So then he ended up staying over to help me sort out my room and whatever. And then he came back on the Wednesday. And he said that I really should move out. And I was like, why? And he said that my housemates or something, my housemates or my landlord, they did something with the toilet. So when I went to pee, they would find out if I was pregnant that way because that's normal and healthy. I'm just kidding, that's actually disgusting and crazy. So basically, these people were trying to get Richard to sleep with me and then find out that I was pregnant from getting a urine sample out of the toilet. So I went upstairs and I flushed the toilet, like, and I pressed the button for the toilet and it didn't flush. So I was like, what? But there was a broom cupboard underneath the stairs that had been renovated and turned into um, a mini bathroom. There was a toilet and a basin and that worked. So I used that. Also, a few days before I asked this friend to come over um, yeah, when I was at work, that girl that told me about all that rubbish, uh, she showed me a picture that my housemates had taken of my room where they broke in and trashed it. And I just broke down crying. I was so upset. The owner gave me a camera to put into my room. Because by law, those establishments that I was working at, they're required to have um, cameras inside the building, except for the working rooms. And on the outside. That's why I felt safe working there at those places. I keep moving my eyes because I've got to press the pause button to get through this. Let's see if I can sit still and focus. There's lightning outside. I don't even remember what I was talking about. Yeah, so they were messing around with my toilet. So, I was like, that is disgusting. And the only time I used that toilet that they messed with was when I had to do that morning joyous activity because I thought it'd be funny to watch them play around in poop but I still don't know what to even think of that like why would you play around in someone's poop to find traces of pee to find out if they're pregnant why don't you just mind your own business We've just hit an hour, Jess. We've just hit an hour. Keep going. You've got this. Then I decided that I just needed a break from people together. So, <clears throat> excuse me, my voice is cranking out. Um, 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 um. 
So I took a couple of weeks off from working so I could just meditate and keep myself closed off from all this madness. Then I ended up going to Newcastle to work, which was good for me to get out of Sydney. Yeah, so um, this was in June. I don't remember exactly what date, but it doesn't matter anyway. And yeah, I was at work and it was like three in the morning and it was pretty quiet. So I just sat outside having a coffee and a cigarette and I was seeing what all these sheeple sheep people were doing and oops, it's thundering and lightning outside it's nice so yeah it was like three ish in the morning it was close to closing time anyway and i was so tired and so I was just looking to see what people were carrying on about this time. I don't know if this was bribed or not, but they were just like talking about getting someone to come into my work to hold me down to force themselves onto me to try and make me pregnant. So I was like, okay. I dare you. So I was waiting until the person that was coming in to do this. And I think I picked up a candle stick holder for the long tapers. I picked one of those up because I was waiting for him to come, come in so I could lay him out. <coughs> And it was this really old, decrepit man. And he spoke like a freaking inbred. Or he just could have been from the country. Anyway, so I abused him. And I didn't see him. I had already made bank anyway, so I just left work as well. Then... What I read is that he said that we did it twice. An old, decrepit man held me down. I would have loved to see him try. Besides, I don't think sperms that old would have done anything anyway. By the way, holding someone down to come inside them to make them pregnant, that's sexual assault. And why, why weren't the police stepping in to stop this madness? Ew, and another thing is, oh, I actually forgot about that. I have a picture of my boobies being publicly exposed because someone asked someone, another person, that I was intimate with to take a picture of my boobs to publicly expose them. Why? If any of these people had asked me for a picture of my breasts, I would say no. I would say go stuff yourself. So it had to be sneaky and underhanded. But if you don't like me, why would you want to see what my boobs look like? I don't even want to know what you look like underneath your clothes. Unless I'm really into you. And what do my boobs have to do with anything? 
do you think the children that are dying in Africa of starvation and don't have basic the basic the bare necessities of life do you think they're sitting around going hmm I wonder what Jess Wilson's boobs look like I don't think so that's called revenge porn for your information and I even looked up some of the people they're like 15 like just kids stay away from me it's so draining like I can't believe that I actually have to discuss my privacy just to defend myself but when I stood up for myself I was the one that was always made to feel like I was crazy because this is apparently normal and I'm crazy moving on I had gone three weeks I think without any drugs because I needed to because I needed to work through everything without suppressing it with chemicals so I was quite proud of myself that dealing with this I didn't go and get drugs <sighs> the next um, exciting event after that I met someone that I really liked and I really 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 regret regret <laughs> not ever telling him then it was the 22nd of June and city calm down came back to Sydney and I went to go see them they had released a new they released echoes in blue during the time that I was going through all this filth yeah I just looked it up they released echoes in blue on the 6th of April 2018 so I went to go see them as I said and I had yes I remember that I had bought drugs before the concert so I was really really high because I was having a really really rough day anyway because I was missing I was I was missing my family and I was missing our family dogs and I had enough of all the craziness I was going on around me plus because of my social anxiety I was already freaking out about being around a lot of people because concerts have a lot of people so I got to that point where I was high but I was just getting further and further like up like I should have stopped but I just kept going and my jaw was shaking and it didn't calm my nerves down it just freaked me out even more and I was in the mood if you know what I mean and so I was messaging this person I'm not naming like I'm not actually saying the names of these people for a reason because we already know who they are so when I say like this friend and this friend and this person this person we already know who they are yeah so I messaged him to meet up and go back to my place because I can because I'm an adult and it's none of anyone's business anyway and I'm never ever ever going to forgive myself because city calm down they went on hiatus in 2019 the year after this and I'm really angry with myself because they're not around anymore 
for the time being. Hopefully they'll come back because I miss them. I ended up leaving the concert to go uh, to go back to my place with this idiot. <sighs> and then the next morning, it was the same rubbish all over again because these people again were trying to get this guy to knock me up and they were going to find out anyway because remember <laughs> what they were doing with my toilet and then I watched Cancer Moon's Tarot, Anthony's channel. So he was amongst these people that was trying to get this person to have sex with me, to make me pregnant. And listen to this. And Venus. Happy birthday from Cali, thank you guys so much, appreciate all of you. Alright guys, so what's going on with you guys here? Okay, so the mutual energy between you and another person is a page of wands in reverse, okay? So we're not having no passionate communication, no affection being shown, but the tower at the bottom, some of you are breaking away from a connection, some of you Cancerians are going to be breaking away from a connection, not showing love to one another, not showing somebody affection, and just blocking somebody out of your life that you had something romantically with, to get into a relationship with somebody else. Is what I'm seeing here, Kinserian. Some of you are leaving who you're with now to get into a connection with somebody else. Wow. All right. Cancer, I feel like what's going on here is that you're trying to bring balance back into your life, especially when it comes towards your emotions. Um, I feel as if strongly there's a lot of things that are going on that is making you feel a little hectic. It's a lot of hectic energy. And you're getting to a point where you want to balance out things in your life. You have certain key points in certain areas in your life you'd like to work on, and you're focusing on putting the work into that. You know, the person you're dealing with, yeah, they are offering you something, but yet again, Cancer, I feel like you're trying to break away from this person because there's someone else you want to be with. So I feel like because they're offering you this, you still aren't going to accept the offer. You're going to be breaking away from the offer. And because of that, I don't see much balance being here. I see things kind of being a little more hectic, Cancer, because this person here is going to be angry about it. This person here is not going to be happy that you want to, you know, resonate elsewhere in your love life. You want to be in a different kind of relationship. You know, you don't really want this relationship is what I'm seeing here. So I feel like you just don't really, your vibrations don't really match with this person anymore. And you're kind of looking for love elsewhere is what I'm seeing here, Cancer. Wow. For the first time, we're not holding on to this. We're moving to something else, huh? Fuck with it. Keep so, <clears throat> this person that I don't even know calling me an F-wit that just got someone to try to knock me up. I don't know. Let's continue. I am 19. between you and another person is the king of wands okay somebody here can be stubborn look or somebody here is focusing too much on the passion too okay see how he's staring into that wand somebody here can be focusing a lot on the passion or you could feel like someone's a player overall though i just feel like there's a lot of passion between you two right libra i feel like right now from a period of not so much stagnant energy but from a period of not showing much love and affection you guys are really having this love and affection you guys are really having this sexy passionate energy for some this is like straight up fucking sex. Like you guys have been pounding it out in the past uh, 24 hours. You're gonna be pounding it out. Yeah. So what's going on here is I feel. I don't know how to say this without meaning to sound rude, but whoever you are, Luke, Anthony, Cancer Moon's Tarot, you are ugly. I am not attracted to you at all. You're obviously deranged and a pervert. Point blank period. You have absolutely no rights. No right at all. Involving yourself. 
in my private and intimate moments. Do you understand me? So I just continued to ignore him. I don't even remember talking about... Mm, mm. I don't even remember talking to anyone about him or any of this rubbish because that's how insignificant he and this drama is to me. Oh, it's midnight and I'm so tired. But if I don't finish this, then who knows when I'll finish it. It still makes me really sick now that I'm looking back at everything. Like, getting people to finger me, but yet you want to take my place. with carrying on with this rubbish then probably trying to like I know that you definitely bribed someone to try to knock me up because they gave me the proof of that And you want to take my place. I'm really, really struggling to stay awake right now because this nonsense is so boring to talk about. Oh yeah, what I forgot to mention earlier, because it still makes me sick, I don't want to repeat it, but with the whole fingering thing, was I remember, this was like, yeah, the year before, but getting someone to finger me to cause damage down there, And you want to take my place. Really? Also, um, the like bacteria under your fingernails, there's more bacteria under there than in a toilet. Bacteria down there can cause HPV, which can lead to cervix cancer. I got vaccinated for cervix cancer when I was 18. Yeah, because there was three needles and I got the certificate after I got the, the final one. So then after that, I went away to work outside of Sydney. I think for a week, then I came back. Then... Towards the end of July, which was the following month, I went back to the same place. And I was there for two weeks. <laughs> that was an eventful two weeks. As soon as I arrived, I saw a picture of a pregnancy test that I didn't take and there was a lot of gossip going around that I was pregnant and I am too exhausted to talk about this part so I'm going to leave it here for now and I'm going to start again tomorrow a little bit earlier see ya Till then, good night.